Hello, and welcome to the Technology of the Week. In this video, we'll be exploring the world of disruptive technology in the movie rental industry. Back in 2000, a man by the name of Reed Hastings approached CEO John Atioko of Blockbuster about forming a partnership. He was laughed out the room. At this time, Blockbuster was the giant of the movie rental industry, and a partnership seemed ridiculous. Why? Because Hastings was the co-founder and CEO of a company that, at least to Blockbuster's senior management, was just a blip on the radar. It's a funny thought that, especially when we fast forward 16 years to where Blockbuster is a distant memory and Hastings' blip is worth 41.1 billion US dollars. Just a few years ago, watching movies from home was not so easy. In most cases, it involved running to the store to rent your favorite movie. To make matters worse, cable TV didn't allow people to watch what they wanted, when they wanted to. But then, everything changed thanks to the World Wide Web. As Tapscott explains, the web offers benefits like reduced search costs, increased operational efficiencies, and a unique product portfolio. Today we're going to compare two of the biggest players in the industry, Netflix and Amazon Video Prime. As online companies, they are able to enjoy a virtual shelf space, an aggregation of consumers, and electronic delivery. Netflix is an entertainment company offering media streaming and video on demand services. Initially a DVD by mail business, Netflix capitalized on the digitization of DVDs and video. More recently, Netflix have pivoted and started creating their own original content. They largely owe their success to their first mover advantage and clever marketing strategies. Furthermore, their original content and recommendation algorithm helps differentiate them from cable television providers. Amazon Prime Video, another industry specialist, have used their existing business model to attract customers to their video on demand and media streaming services. Amazon Prime Video has obtained both early mover and second mover status throughout the years. Users can also enjoy access to a wide variety of their services. Amazon's bundled services include next day delivery and free monthly ebooks. As it is backed up by a large firm, Amazon can quickly react to market forces. To examine the impact of the industry dynamic, we will first take a look at the industry life cycle followed by Porter's five forces. The DVD rental industry was disrupted by online video providers such as Netflix and later entrants. The actual decline of Blockbuster only came when other players entered the market, which became the birth of the online streaming industry. The industry is currently in its growth phase with competition between major actors like Netflix, Amazon and Hulu. The DVD rental industry was in a mature state with a dominant player, namely Blockbuster. There were high entry barriers, meaning competition was low. Suppliers and consumers had no choice but to go to the dominant player. The changes in technology and distribution strategy meant that the market was easy to enter according to the newly vulnerable market theory. This caused high competition, meaning many substitutes. Due to low entry barriers, the high competition meant consumers had various substitutes. This gave producers and consumers greater power to choose amongst the different providers. Using a SWOT analysis, we can see how these technologies compete in the industry. Netflix strengths lie with their appealing subscription plan, streaming options such as 4K, and access from multiple devices, personalized recommendations, and no ads. In line with Anderson and Elversa's thinking, the extensive library helps consumers find the niche products that fit their specific personal interests, which allows them to move away from popular hits. Amazon offers access from multiple devices along with multiple pricing plans, though these are not as extensive as with Netflix. Their core strength lies in their ability to offer their video services as part of a bundled services package on Amazon Prime. As opposed to Netflix, Amazon Video offers 4K quality at no extra cost, whilst also offering the ability to view offline. A few weaknesses of Netflix are that it relies on a stable internet connection, as content cannot be downloaded for offline viewing, like with Amazon. The basic membership also excludes 4K video. Whilst the consumer can watch all of Netflix's content, Amazon Video only streams content marked as Prime, which must be purchased at an additional cost. Furthermore, Amazon only allows streaming on two devices, as opposed to four on Netflix. It 
was identified that Netflix is able to grow by adapting its service to upcoming new platforms, such as smart TVs. Additionally, they can add more variety to their library with international movies and TV shows. It may also consider offering offline viewing. Some of these opportunities will also be enhanced by cheaper, faster internet. Amazon Video's opportunities would be to make simultaneous streaming possible with more devices and make more content available without the need for additional purchases. Nevertheless, threats must be taken into account. For Netflix, they are increasing competition, reliance on licensing companies whose revenues are cannibalized by Netflix, piracy, and the cost of producing original content. Similarly to Netflix, Amazon also runs the risk of piracy. However, Amazon has much more to lose in case an error occurs, as this may affect its other business operations, such as e-commerce. In addition to the SWOT, an industry life cycle analysis, Jeffrey Moore's process life cycle, adapted to technologies, aided us in making future predictions. The technologies are in the process of completing stage three. The invention occurred with the ability to stream online. The innovation was generating profits from this invention using a monthly subscription rate. It's being standardized due to the increased competition and need to create original content. In the future, commoditization will take place as cable producers will realize that their profits are being stolen by streaming services. Cable producers will then be forced to create their own online streaming services. Streaming services will no longer receive the licenses to stream and they may likely go out of business. Consumers will be able to directly stream content from cable producers, as has already been seen with HBO. In the future, a business network may even be created amongst these producers in the form of an alliance as package deals. We agree with Anderson that in order to continue to prosper, these streaming services will need to emphasize the niche market with a focus on their own content. Additionally, as predicted in the travel industry, streaming services will also need to offer a more personalized recommendations based on their past behavior.